Hi there guys, you're here with Bo and welcome to my channel at Cryptocurrency Australia. Today we have an incredible article that's just come out around a billionaire that's looking to buy 25% of all Bitcoin in existence, says Crypto Mogul. Now this would account for around about uh, 40 to $50 billion worth of Bitcoin at the current rate. So in today's video, we're going to go through this article. We're going to go through how feasible it would actually be to buy 25% of all Bitcoin in circulation and what it might do to prices if it were to actually take place. So stick around and let's get into the video. So welcome back everyone. And so this article that we're gonna go through, uh, the billionaire wants to buy 25% of all Bitcoin in existence, says Crypto Mogul. This is from the dailyhodl.com. Now running through the article, the owner of a decentralized art gallery says she's getting deeper into the crypto game by helping the super rich acquire Bitcoin. Elisa Dediani launched uh, Maycenas, Maycenas last year, which uses the Ethereum blockchain to sell fine art for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Andy Warhol's 14 small electric chairs was the first piece for sale on the platform. 100 people bought fractional shares for a 49% ownership stake in the painting. Now, Dadiani is rolling out a new initiative called Dadiani Syndicate, a peer-to-peer -peer digital asset trading platform for absurdly rich buyers, reports Forbes. And according to Dadiani, one of her clients is looking to buy a jaw-dropping amount of Bitcoin. 25% of the circulating supply. She says here, one of our clients approached us and said they were interested in acquiring 25% of all Bitcoin currently available. There are a number of entities who want to dominate the market. That kind of worries me a little bit, actually, that, uh, that, little, that little statement there. When I founded the institution, it was a way for people to cash out their cryptocurrency assets, but we found that there were people who wanted us to assist them in buying enormous amounts of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin circulating supply is 17,731,812, according to CoinMarketCap. A 25% chunk would be 4,432,953 Bitcoin, worth around about $38.5 billion US at the time of publishing. That's no small amount of money. Daniani says she's working to buy as much Bitcoin as she can for her clients by making over-the-counter purchases. She hopes to avoid pushing up the market price of Bitcoin. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, OTC or over-the-counter is a way for um, clients normally buying large amounts. Typically, OTC is 50,000 to 100,000 minimum. It's a way for them to find uh, sellers of Bitcoin or buyers of Bitcoin to do private trades that are normally facilitated by an escrow. So there are certain companies and platforms that actually specialize in OTC. So they'll send it to an escrow uh, until funds are received and then that will facilitate the trade. Now, the benefit of doing OTC is it keeps these trades off public order books. So the general community, general investors and traders can't actually see these trades going on. So they're done privately. And it also doesn't impact the market. So you don't have, uh, you know, for example, a $10 million Bitcoin buy coming in on a public order book that would send the markets absolutely rallying. So a lot of these huge trades are done OTC for that reason. So she goes on to say that people buying large quantities of Bitcoin want to avoid slippage. The only way to do this is to avoid exchanges. Regardless, eToro's senior market analyst, Matty Greenspan, says Bitcoin buying on that scale would have an obvious impact on the price. Matty says, a buyer of the size is going to push the price up to make this kind of accumulation even more expensive. There are ways to offset that kind of demand-based price increase, but after a certain level, there's not much you can do to prevent it. Yet even a greater number of coins are currently being held by hodlers who will not be willing to part with them for any price. Realistically speaking, there are probably less than 5 million coins actually circulating at the moment. And that's where I find it quite interesting, actually, is if someone were to feasibly actually want to buy that amount of Bitcoin, I don't think they could. I don't think there'd be enough people willing to sell it. I mean, we're talking 25% of the whole supply. We already know that up to 4 million, 4 to 5 million Bitcoins are lost forever. And then they want to buy $4.3 million out of the total of 17.7 uh, million. So... 
you know, if we say that uh, 5 million Bitcoins have been lost, we're talking about 12 million Bitcoins in circulation. Uh, and out of that 12 million, they want to buy 4.4 million. You're talking like around 40%. Around forty, around about forty percent, or maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, uh, of the current available circulating supply. I don't think they'd feasibly be able to find that many people to be able to sell because a large portion of Bitcoin hodlers bought very early, um, that hold huge amounts, and they're not going to sell till Bitcoin's one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, a million. They may never sell, so I don't feasibly think this would actually be possible. And I think that's kind of a good thing because someone holding twenty five percent. Uh, of the current supply, I, I don't think anyone would want that just because of the sheer power to move markets that this individual would actually have. Now, moving on, I wanted to do a little bit of research uh, onto the world, the list of the world's richest people, just to see how, like, how many people would actually have this much money to be able to buy this much Bitcoin. We're talking 38.5 billion. That's at the current market rate. So here are the top, the 20 top richest people, starting off with Jeff Bezos at 152.9 billion. So this would be approximately uh, 30 to 40%, or sorry, sorry, a little bit less. It'd be about maybe 25 to 30% of his total net worth. And then at the bottom at 20, we've got this uh, this uh, Chinese citizen here, $42.1 billion is their net worth. So that would be like 80 to 90% of their total uh, net worth. I don't think any investor that's worth this much would be willing to allocate that much of their wealth into Bitcoin, which kind of makes me doubt this statement. However, there are these are these are publicly known wealthy people. There are people that are privately um, that have private wealth that is not publicly known. And in addition to that, you've also got things like endowments and trusts um, and companies that may be extremely wealthy that would be allocating huge amounts into Bitcoin that aren't actually an individual, that are actually a group of individuals or another entity that isn't a person, uh, so to speak, isn't a natural person uh, in legal terms. So if this were to actually happen, if this were to feasibly happen and someone could, say, come up with the money and buy 25% of the total Bitcoin supply, even if it were OTC, what would happen to the price? Well, I think personally the price would have a massive rally. There's a few reasons why. One is you're talking about taking up to 40% of the total Bitcoin supply off markets if this person was just to buy and hold, drastically uh, increasing the scarcity of Bitcoin. So the available Bitcoin trading on exchanges would reduce by a huge amount. The supply and demand, if demand stayed the same, I think that you would just see a significant increase in price because of this, regardless, again, of it not being on a public order book. And second, I think uh, the news would spread of this buying going ahead extremely quickly. No matter how private they wanted to keep it, 25 billion, uh, 25%, uh, you know, up to nearly 40 billion is a lot of money. And I think the news would spread around the world extremely quickly. And you would see huge amounts of FOMO from large, both retail and institutional clients, I think would send the price absolutely skyrocketing. So it'll be interesting to see where this actually goes um, and, it, and if it actually gains any traction. I don't know, but I do know that there are obviously people out there with a lot of money and those in the know and those who have done their research uh, would know that putting a bet on Bitcoin is not a bad bet at all. So guys, that's it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, likes always appreciated. Links to all these articles are always down in the description below. If you're not subscribed, uh, consider doing so. Come and join the team. Don't hesitate to leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. So I just want to say thanks again for watching, guys. Really appreciate your time. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.